Okay, so we're talking about the drugs that are used in neurology and basically neurological disorders and mainly we're focusing on the drug that are used for epilepsy. Since we know that we have generalized epilepsy and then partial epilepsy, okay? So the partial epilepsy and generalized epilepsy, um, there are like different types and different categories for which we need specific drugs that we focus on. So... If we're talking about the benzos, so the first category that we have is benzos. Benzos and barbitals. The barbitals is like the phenobarbital. These are the drugs that are sedative and hypnotic drugs. So the uh, benzodiazepine is basically used for status epilepticus. And what it does is that it increases GABA action. And it is um, basically it is causing sedation. So, um, it is also used at uh, like midazolams and all the PAMs and all the LAMs are included in benzodiazepines. So, what it does is that it basically increases, uh, it works through the GABA-A receptors and the GABA-A receptors are important for sedation. So, if you're having anxiety attacks and um, before going to the dentist, these are the drugs that are usually prescribed, that is midazolam, and um, they're also um, misused as a day trip drug, okay? So, benzos are better than barbitals because benzos have an antidote. So, their antidote is flumazenil, if I'm correct, let me make sure. So the benzos are basically, yeah, they're safer, they're much safer compared to barbital and their antidote is flumazenil. And what it does is that their antidote flumazenil is basically blocking the BZ1 and BZ2 receptor and they block the action of benzos, okay? So, um, if we're talking about the um, drugs that is safe, it's obviously, if you're overdosing on a benzo, you're e more likely to have um, an, you know, uh, excessive sedation. So, the side effect that your patient will come with is that, the patient will be excessively sedated. There can be respiratory depression and there it is uh, likely to develop tolerance over time. So um, we are using this drug for eclampsia seizures as well. The uses of benzos are listed in this table. So alprazolam, diazepam, lorazepam, midazolam. So it's basically the PAMs and LAMs that are included in benzos. And so the drug basically focuses for anxiety and it also focuses on sleep disorders. And alprazolam has a rapid onset and diazepam is like more long lasting. Okay. If a patient comes to you who has taken excessive benzo, like a child who has maybe taken the whole bottle. So what would be the risk? The risk will be for respiratory depression because benzos work through GABA receptors, okay? So they are GABA depressant leading to respiratory depression. One more important thing is if we're talking about a CNS neurotransmitter, it's going to work through one of these receptor pathway it's either going to be a glutamate it's either going to be an inhibitory gaba dopamine or an opioid or it's either going to be acetylcholine norepinephrine and serotonin okay so it either works through these one of these receptor and the sedative hypnotics they work through the gaba receptor which is inhibitory so it's basically used for like sedation anxiety so it's important to know the side effects so the side effects Pretty clear. Respiratory depression, tolerance, dependence, sedation. The next stuff that we're going to be talking about is phenobarbital. So phenobarbital is basically used for partial seizures, tonic-clonic seizures, and it is also used for status epilepticus. Again, it has the same mode of action. It works through GABA-A action. Okay, It increases the GABA-A action, and it is basically working as a sedative again 
so it can cause sedation tolerance dependence induction of cytochrome p450 so what it means by the induction of cytochrome p450 that some of the drugs they work through induction of cytochrome p450 system and these drugs are very important to know okay so what these drugs cause is that they can cause respiratory depression okay and the drugs that are included in the cytochrome p450 inducer are pcps that is phenytoin carbamazepine phenobarbital so the phenobarbital basically can cause cardiorespiratory depression which is kind of the same uh, as the benzos but the benzos uh, do not work as a cytochrome p450 inducer that is why benzos are much safer and also because benzos they have um, an antidote that is flumazono okay whereas barbitols they don't and barbitols are considered first line drugs in neonates because like you can remember this way as phenobarbital okay so the next drug that we will talk about is probably going to be let's go with ethosuximide okay so if we're talking about the seizure drugs one important drug is right here ethosuximide and why because this is the only drug that we use for absent seizures so absent seizures are the kind of seizures when the child it will be probably uh, the question will say that the child um, is blanking out and staring at something for some minutes so they it went on a absent seizure the, the child is like staring blankly these were all the signs that have to be mentioned okay so if you're looking for a mnemonic it's like sucks to have silent absent seizures okay sucks to have silent seizures that is absent seizures and the side effects that are caused by ethosuximide is that ethosuximide causes fatigue it causes gi distress headache itching and sjs what is sjs it is steven johnson syndrome which is a very important side effect for ethosuximide and again ethosuximide is the only drug that is used for absent seizures so this table right here shows the important drugs that are used for seizures okay if it's a partial seizure partial simple complex seizures we use valproic acid phenytoin valproic acid is like the most commonly used drug for any seizure state then for general tonic clonic seizure again valproic acid phenytoin carbamazepine the next one is general absence seizure and just what we talked about ethosuximide is the only drug that is used for general absence seizures and lastly we have the status epilepticus and the drug that is used for status epilepticus is lorazepam diazepam phenytoin okay so if we're talking about the absence seizures it is ethosuximide child will probably present with these symptoms and okay if a question comes like this that if a child is having absence seizure along with another seizure then we will always give them valproic acid because valproic acid is also mentioned for absence seizures but if it's only an absence seizure we will use ethosuximide so once we've discussed three drugs that is the third one was ethosuximide the fourth one that we will talk about is phenytoin phenytoin is a is not considered a safe drug phenytoin works through blocking the sodium channel and it is one of the drugs that has a zero order kinetics the drugs that have a zero order kinetics are p e and a it's p so p stands for phenytoin e stands for ethanol and a stands for aspirin these are the drugs that have the zero order kinetics all the other drugs have the first order kinetics and phenytoin basically is one of the drug as we mentioned above it is one of the drug that is the cytochrome p450 inducer so it will obviously cause cytochrome p450 induction and phenytoin patient will mostly present with enlarged gums that they will have a red gum and also with hirsutism okay so they will have excessive growth excessive mustache 
and you can imagine this they can also have weak bones they will be complaining of pain bone pain and so apart from this they also cause two types of anemias that is megaloblastic anemia and uh, uh, aplastic anemia but it is not mentioned here you can write it down other than that What's important to know about it is that it causes large clumps, osteopenia, and hirsutism, and it is teratogenic. Most of the drugs that we're talking about are teratogenic, that is, they are included in the category D, and they are not considered safe in pregnancy, okay? And if they're used in pregnancy, it can cause cleft lip and cleft palate, and also fetal hide and toin syndrome. And uh, rare toxicity is Steven Johnson. Steven Johnson can be a very important toxicity if we're talking about the drug that is ethosuximide. But as far as um, phenytoin is concerned, it is rare. The next drug that we're talking about is another one of the same class that is used for seizure is carbamazepine. So carbamazepine is almost mechanical. Uh, its mechanism is almost similar to phenytoin. That is, carbamazepine blocks the sodium channels. And basically, it is used for seizures and it is also used for trigeminal neuralgia. It is the first line drug for trigeminal neuralgia. And it causes the side effects that are associated with the use of carbamazepine is that it causes diplopia, it causes ataxia, blood dyscrasias liver toxicity, spina bifida, it is one of the drugs that is, um, it, um, I'm sorry, it is the drug that causes induction of cytochrome P450 and it is also involved in a syndrome of inappropriate ADH secretion resulting in excessive ADH and Stephen Johnson syndrome and these are the toxicities associated with carbamazepine. So carbamazepine, um, it also causes the same toxicity as phenytoin. That was, it causes megaloblastic anemia and aplastic anemia. And again, carbamazepine is also a teratogenic drug. It is also considered a um, category D drug, a category D drug, and it's Side effect is that taking this in pregnancy can cause cleft lip and cleft palate and also spina bifida. So the next drug that we're talking about is valproic acid. Valproic acid is going to be our sixth drug. Valproic acid's mechanism is similar to phenytoin, but it has three different mechanisms. So it basically works by blocking the sodium channel. It works by blocking the GABA transaminase. Through inhibition of GABA transaminase, it increases the concentration of GABA, uh, GABA and uh, it also works by blocking the T-type calcium channels, okay? So you can write it down, blocks T-type calcium channels, okay? Valproic acid is basically used for bipolar disorder and migraine prophylaxis which is not really mentioned here so you can just write it down it is used for bipolar disorder it is a very good drug for bipolar disorder and it is also used for migraines and if we're talking about the side effects well proic acid basically causes liver toxicity which is very very important side effect of this drug is that it causes liver toxicity hepatotoxicity because um it will basically derange your lft so it is important if you keep a count of the patient's lfts and basically uh if a child at an age two or less um, takes this drug there at greater risk because they form toxic metabolite the second important side effect that can be asked is that it causes pancreatitis and it also causes gi distress weight gain again it's one of the drugs that is integrated in pregnancy and it's very commonly used for as we all know it is one of the most common drug for seizures 
so it's used for my chronic seizures bipolar disorder migraine prophylaxis. so i didn't read this so i wrote it down here anyways so moving on from here the next drug that we will be talking about is probably going to be gabapentin so gabapentin is one of the drugs that affects the calcium channel and works by inhibiting the high voltage gated calcium channels and uh, it is also a GABA analog so another name for uh, another formula for gabapentin that is used is pregabalin gabapentin is one of those drugs that is considered pretty safe it is a safe drug and it is beneficial in patients who are diabetics okay what are the side effects of gabapentin gabapentin causes sedation and ataxia if we're talking about the uses one of the most important reasons that it is used is for neuropathic pathway post herpetic neuralgia which is one of the most important reason why we use gabapentin so i'm gonna leave it right here and then we'll proceed with these drugs later